All right, good morning. Getting ready to install my other automatic transfer switch. Okay, and this one is to control the inverter, the sub panel, and the input on this one, which remember is here. This is the shore power, shore power generator. Shore power is on the right, generator is on the left. And what we're going to be doing is the main panel, which is up there, we're going to consider that the generator so that it takes precedence. And I'll explain that later. It needs to take priority. Okay. The inverter is going to act as the shore power. Now, I know this doesn't make any sense, but these transfer switches are for generators shore power and this sort of thing now <clears throat> the output which is at the top here remember we got generator power we got shore power consider this inverter that's batteries and consider this one the other the other uh, or the main service panel okay we're gonna that's the generator and I'll explain why. Now, when this comes out, when it leaves the automatic transfer switch, it's going to the sub panel, all right? Which I'm gonna mount right next to the other one. I'll explain that a little bit better once I get the wires and stuff like that um, going into the right boxes, etc. And I'll explain why and everything. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I've got my other automatic transfer switch <clears throat> uh, installed on the wall I've got my other uh, my sub panel and I've got my main panel right next to it and I'm getting ready to uh, to install this uh, ground bar uh, this uh, this unit didn't come with one uh, came with a neutral bar and you know you could ground it to this but I'll explain that later on that you never you never bond your grounds and your neutrals together in an RV and I'll explain that later so this ground will be attached to the box over here and all the bare copper and green wires will attach to this same thing in this box over here I put in the uh, the grounding bar um, you know this could be the grounding bar but it's bonded to the neutral and you don't want that so all right let me uh let me tighten this box up i'll be right back all right i've got got my inverter mounted on the wall I've got my bus bars for my negative, my positive. I've got my 12 volt breaker panels or uh, fuse panels. I've got my sub panel mounted. I've got my uh, main panel wired. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to put in a receptacle right here for the converter because that has to plug in. And then I'm going to wire it into a 20 amp breaker up there. All right, that'd be buck. All right, this is my converter, and it's plugged in. I ran a new circuit, 20 amp circuit for it here. That's ready to go. Um, I've got, let's see what I got here. Alright. <clears throat> so, on our list of things there, I've got my converter, and even though it says 15 amp, I went ahead and put it on a 20. If there's any issues, I can change it, no big deal. Alright, and that's of course in the main panel because. We only want the converter to run if we're plugged into shore power. 
Alright, so. Alright, I'll be back. Okay. I got my dog bone plugged in, which is, uh, takes, uh, 20 amps, uh, so you can plug in just a regular household cord into the RV. So I've got about 20 amps coming in, and, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you the, the monitor here in a second, but I want to explain. So the power's coming in here, comes up, goes into the surge protector, and here are the codes right there. So E0 is normal, okay? Anything else, there's a problem. So we want to, we always want to see E0. So let's take a look at the monitor. Leg 2, 125 amps, 60 hertz, E0, did you see that? E0, okay, Let's see if I can, let me throw some. We throw a load on that because it's saying zero amps. Okay. That was a uh, saber saw. That's plugged into that outlet that I just put in there. Okay. And it said, it said two amps, like zero amps now, 60 hertz, E0. That's leg one, 124 amps, zero. I'm sorry, 124 volts. Leg two, 125 volts, zero amps, 60 hertz, E0. Leg one, 124 volts, zero amps. See how it scrolls through? Now it's got a bypass. I guess you can just, you could turn the surge protector off. Okay. So it's, it's off. So I'm going to assume that it's not I'm not going to assume anything. I'll have to read up on that. But uh, that's pretty cool. So this converter, that's what that plug is for right there. Okay. All right. Now I'm getting ready to put in another another box uh, outlet so that I can have some, uh, some power in here when I'm working. Um, that one is strictly for that. It's got its own breaker and everything. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, to wire up the main panel, uh, main panel, into the automatic switch. I've already got the uh, inverter hardwired in to the short power side. And uh, I'll show you more about the jumper and what I had to do there in a few minutes. Let me get this. Uh, let me get this wire attached here, and I'll be back. Okay, I've got my inverter wire in, wired into my inverter, and now I'm doing my main panel wire. That's here. I've got it grounded. I've got my neutral, neutral on. And now I'm getting ready to hook up my, my two hots to my 30 amp breaker. I'll be back. All right, let me uh, just try to explain what the system's doing right now. Okay, I've got 20 amps hooked up 
from the house, okay? I know it's 20 amps because I have it plugged into a 20 amp outlet. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's 20 amps coming through, but there's 20 amps available, okay? So when I throw my meter on here, uh, when I hook it up, you'll be able to see, you know, how many amps are being put into the system and how many watts I'm using, etc. Okay. So as you can tell or see, my uh, my little uh, code thing there is telling me E zero, everything's normal. All right. <coughs> So it's going into the transfer switch and you can see that the green light is on and green light means shore power. Okay. Now to contrast that, here's the one, here's the other one that's open and the bottom light LED is lit, which means generator. Okay. So here's what's happening. The power is coming in from there, from the shore power, coming in, going through the surge protector, going through the automatic transfer switch, the shore power side, going into my breaker panel. And then here's a 30 amp breaker that splits off, comes down, and supplies this automatic <clears throat> transfer switch. Okay, see it coming down. And it's going into the generator side. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm too tired to finish it tonight, but power will come out of here. Remember, shore power, generator power. Okay, so. <clears throat> We've got the main breaker. Or the main panel. We've, we're making the switch think that it's the generator so that it stays on and provides power to my sub panel whenever we're plugged into shore power a generator or some other type of, of electricity. Okay. <clears throat> that is the inverter. Okay. Now that's wired into the shore power side. Now watch what happens when I kill the power to this switch right here. I'm going to throw the main breaker and watch the lights change. Now, this inverter is providing the 110 volt from the batteries <clears throat> and through this right here, it's sending the power in, coming up, going in here and like I said when I tomorrow when I finish wiring the switch to the sub panel which is right here there's the sub panel then the breakers that are in here will be live and they'll be fed from the inverter now what do I need in this panel I'm going to put the microwave, I've got a 20 amp fuse for that, and some, uh, some outlets in the kitchen, and <clears throat> right behind this wall is the bedroom. I'm going to power the outlets in that room, and the heating system, okay, and the bedroom AC, which is you know, you know where the AC is, it's right above the bed. So this box right here is a sub panel 
and currently right now is being fed by the inverter. Well, it's not being fed right now by the inverter because there's no, I haven't hooked the wire up. Basically, there'll be another one of these wires, okay? And that wire will come out of the top of the box like we did here. And we will power up the sub panel, okay? I just hooked uh, I just hooked a couple of wires to the battery. I put some fuses in there. And now I'm going to plug my jigsaw into the inverter. Okay? So you see how that's plugged into the inverter? have 12.6 volts Let's put it on watts and this jigsaw is providing or, or putting out but it's using about 200 watts okay it's not using anything right now because it's not turned on all right now See how no lights are on? The main breaker's off. That means there's no power from from there making its way to the uh, to anything. Okay, because I've got it turned off. <clears throat> I'm sorry. On this side of the uh, on this side, we still have short power. Now, when I turn this inverter back on, watch. Watch what happens. You'll hear the click. Listen. Okay. I don't know if you saw that or not. But watch. See the light come on? Light goes off. It clicks over. Watch it again. Okay. So, <clears throat> to demonstrate... Now the inverter is providing the power, okay, and that's wired in as the shore power. Now watch what happens when I turn on that breaker up there, because remember, the generator takes priority. And since we have the main power wired in as if it were the generator, and the inverter, which is here, which is here, is wired in as shore. So remember, generator takes precedence. So watch what happens. Watch the light. It's going to switch from here to here, which means it's going to be running on the left side, which is the generator. So watch. see that now there was a delay about 20 seconds and the reason for that delay is generators take about 10 to 15 to 20 seconds to get up to full power okay so as soon as you turn on the generator it's got to run for a minute get get you know Get its uh, get its watts and its amps and everything all up to uh, up to speed. So there's a delay. Okay, I mean this is great stuff right here. Okay, <clears throat> so I can't hold the uh, well. I guess I can. I'll do it from out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the shore power. And of course, this unit right here will shut off. Everything will shut off except for, oops, the inverter. Let me turn the inverter back on.
Now, that's going to stay in generator mode. Remember, the bottom one is generator, the top is shore. So we're in generator mode right now. But watch what happens when I unplug the shore power. And that's right here. It immediately went into shore power mode right there okay so the inverter now <clears throat> is providing power only and that's all coming from the batteries okay now you think that plug right there is gonna work watch And the answer is no, because that's the reason we've got the sub panel <laughs> is because when you're running on batteries, you can't run everything. You can't, you have to be, you know, conscious of the devices that you're going to be powering. Um, LED, LED lights, uh, you know, the microwave occasionally, the air conditioning occasionally. Because once the batteries are depleted of their energy, the inverter won't work anymore. You won't have any power anywhere. So the reason for the sub panel right there, the small panel, is so that we can take circuits that we want to run only on batteries if, you know, if we're on batteries and... Um, and only run those devices, okay? And we've decided that, you know, the TV, the microwave, the bedroom AC, and the heating system are the things that we definitely want to... And I, now remember now, this is all 110 stuff. This is like house power, 110. This is all the 12-volt stuff, okay? <clears throat> the LED lights are 12-volt. The... Uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, everything is, is 12 volts. The refrigerator um, runs on propane, but the controls, the light in it and everything is all 12 volt. Okay. Uh, we'll get, we'll get more into that stuff later, but uh, okay. Uh, let me clean up a little bit and I'll come back. Okay. Something else I did today was... I did get those two other crimps and I've had 40 pounds of pressure in the entire coach, the entire coach. See, this is open. This is closed. If this were open, that's how I fill my tanks. Okay. The drain, which is this one right here. I don't know if you can see that yellow. That's closed, and so the water comes in, comes down, goes across, goes down and right in, right into the coach, okay? I'll show you more tomorrow. Like I just shut it off, shut it back on, okay? No leaks, no nothing. I'm gonna leave that hooked up all night, and then I'll check inside tomorrow, real thorough, all the connections. So far, nothing today. Um, all right, I think that was a good day, a good productive day. Um, uh, once I get that sub panel in tomorrow, and I've got to get some more lugs, some more crimp lugs for my, so I can shorten up my wires. They're just too long. And, uh, and I can start hooking up my, well, you can't see it's behind the paper there, but those are the 12 volt circuit panels. And uh, tomorrow I'll plug in my converter and start charging my batteries. So lots of good stuff tomorrow. I'll be back. 
Uh, if you like the video, like it. If you like the channel, subscribe. And thanks for watching.